Okay, so for the first part of our class, we're going to look at uh, question 3a. And this is also part of uh, what we have already covered. But let's see what they're saying. They are saying that the voltage and current at the terminals of uh, the circuit, circuit element are zero for t less than zero. And then for t greater than zero, we're given these. So here they're, they're saying that when t is less than zero, uh, the voltage and currents are both zeros. That's going to be useful at some point. But for t greater than zero, we have the expression for the voltage, a function of time, given as 1,500. And this is a t plus one. And then this multiplies e uh, minus 750 t. This is in volts. The same way, we have the expression for the current, a function of time as well. And this is given as minus, uh, not minus, that's 40. And then we have E minus 750. And then we have T there. Now this is in milli, this is in milliamps. Let me just uh, verify these values. Okay, now how do you solve this question? So what are we looking for? In the first part, they're saying find the time when the power delivered to the circuit element is maximum. So power. So how do you calculate power? Well, for a circuit, we know to say power can just be seen as the product of the voltage and the current. So this is how we get the power. But then we are already given the voltage, expression for the voltage, and we are also given the expression for the current. So I can just bring those two here. So for the power, for the power we have, uh, for the voltage I mean, we have 1,500, and then this is T plus one. And then here we have E to the minus 750 T. So this has to multiply the current. And for current, we have 40, and then E minus 750T. Now just be very careful here. When calculating power, the solution comes out in watts. But this is only if the voltage comes in volts and the current comes in amps. So when you check what you're given here, the voltage comes in volts, but the current comes in milliamps. So what you have is, um, what you have is power, the voltage is coming in volts, but the current is coming in milli amps. So what does this imply? Your solution will have the milli, volt, and the ampere. So, and from this, we know to say the volt and ampere defines the watt. So in other words, what we are looking at here is something that is going to be the milli volt ampere, which is basically just the milliwatt. So our solution here is going to have the milliwatt. But we haven't reached where we're going. What we have is just the expression for the power. Okay, yes, our solution is going to have the milliwatts. So let's go back to actually finishing working out this question. So I'll leave out the units. We'll get the units at the very end. For now, we just keep that in mind. So we have the power being given by all this. Now we just want to simplify this a little bit further. So I'll distribute uh, things here. So now our power becomes equal to, okay. So here what you have to see is uh, these two can be combined. The 40 can be distributed here. The 40 can multiply, or first we can combine these and then we'll distribute the 40 together. So how do you multiply exponents? So if you have e to the power a, multiplying e to the power a. So when you're multiplying exponents, since the base is the same, they're both raised to base e. Uh, yeah. So it implies just add the powers. So this becomes, okay, let's say this is, uh, here it's a, it's the same power. So let's say you had a and b here. So just add the power for the first one and the power for the second one. So this only applies if the bases are the same. So this becomes power A plus B. So this is the concept we're going to use here. So our expression will become, using that concept, 
So for these two here, I'll just add their powers. So this becomes plus the second term here. So in the same way, this is 1500t zero zero plus 1. Still have the 40 here. So of course, there's no need for that uh, that plus. The plus and the minus will give a minus. So this is uh, now just minus 750t minus 750t. And of course, these two can now be added up. And 75 plus 75, that will give 150. Okay, so when you combine these two, we end up getting minus 1,500 with the T. So this is what we end up getting here. So at this point, you can now just distribute this so that this can be, you can write it as one function. Uh, we can do this, guys, but we can still just go ahead with the next step here. It just depends with uh, uh, which point you actually want to uh, to do this. I think even right here, it's fine. Now we have the expression, so I'll, I'll leave it here. Again, you can choose to distribute this so that it multiplies the 1,500 T and also the one there. You can do that. Or you can still just proceed at this point. Now, what comes next? Well, we have the expression for the power, a function of time. But what are we looking for? The question is asking us to find the value of time at a specific point. So where is it? So here, they're saying find the time when the power delivered to the circuit element is maximum. So how do you ensure that the power delivered is maximum? So for now, just try to see this question beyond it being a, uh, an electrical problem. Instead, relate it to mathematical principles or concepts that you have learned. Imagine if you had a function y, and then let's say if this function y gives you something, let's say, maybe you have x squared uh, plus 2x, maybe minus 1. And then the question says, uh, maybe this one is not going to have a maximum. We can maybe even put a negative here to ensure that this is maximum. So let's say the question now says, you know when you look at this question, this is a quadratic expression. And if you try to plot it, you know to say it's a quadratic that faces downwards like this. Now, its maximum is going to occur at that point. So our question, the one we're looking at in electrical here, relates with them asking us to say, what would be the time at this point here where the function acquires its maximum value. So how do you do that? In mathematical concepts, you know to say, if you have a function like this one, to get a maximum, what do you do? You first have to differentiate. So you have to get dy. In this case, this is a function with respect to x. So you do this with respect to x. So if I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x, I'll have minus 2x. And the next term is going to be just a 2 plus 2. So I have differentiated my function y with respect to x. But what do we know about the maximum point? Well, at that maximum point, the derivative has to be equals to 0. Why? The derivative of a function gives us the gradient. And at the maximum, the gradient will be a... Uh, will be the gradient of a tangent like that, not necessarily like that, something like this. So you know to say a tangent at any point tells us what the gradient is at that specific point. And the gradient at that point, if the gradient here, when you get the derivative at any point, we get, it actually gives us the gradient. So if the derivative is equals to zero, it implies that the gradient is equals to zero. Or where the gradient is zero, the derivative has to be equals to zero because the derivative of a function at a given point, it tells us what the gradient is at that point. So by differentiating this and equating to zero, we're actually trying to identify the exact point where the gradient is zero because at that point, the derivative will be equals to zero. So from here, we can easily then solve this for x so that we end up with 2x is equals to 2. And finally, 
we see that it will acquire a maximum value when x is equals to 1. So based on this, we then have this question. But here, we want to find the value of t such that this will have a maximum value. Our power will have a maximum value. So it's the same concept. For the power to be maximum, this is a function. Just look at it as a function. For this function to acquire a maximum value, the derivative has to be equals to zero at that point. So in other words, we have to get the derivative of the power with respect to time. Now to differentiate this, we're going to, uh, to observe that we have to use product rule. So let u be equal to 1,500 t plus one, and then we'll let v be equal to 40 e minus 1,500 t. So u prime, so again, product rule, we did go through it last, uh, last in the other class. u prime, just this, this is going to be just 1,500, okay? Then, yeah, that's just the one, the zero. Then V prime, V prime, so this is a 40. First, differentiate the power there. When you differentiate the power, you get minus 1,500. Then multiply it down here. You have minus 1,500 multiplying 40. And then you have E to the minus 1,500 T. So now we just have to simplify this and see that V prime will be equal to, so we get 50,000. Then E to the minus one five zero zero T. So when we now uh, use our product rule, the derivative of the power with respect to time will be, we'll keep U first and U is this, that's 1,500t plus 1. So this is our u. And then we'll multiply it. So I'm using u, v prime, plus v, and u prime as our product rule. So v prime is the minus 60,000. And then we have e minus 1,500t. Then plus... Now we need to get second part, V first, and V is 40 E to the minus 1,500. So you have 40 E to the minus 1,500 T. So this is just V. Now V has to multiply U prime, and our U prime is just 1,500. And again, u was this, so u prime is just 1,500. So you have multiplying 1,500. So now we just have to simplify this. So the first part, I'll keep it the way it is. Just concentrate on the second part. So you have this. Okay, so now we just have to simplify this. Remember, since we have uh, done the derivative here, we've differentiated. Uh, the concept here is that the derivative has to be equal to zero. For t, and not for the power to be maximum, the derivative has to be equal to zero. Simplify, we can only equal to zero. Or we can try to simplify this a little bit. Let's try to distribute here and see what we can win. So because let's uh, Black numbers starting to show up when we distribute this. So I would choose to equate to zero right at this stage. Some of these numbers start debugging out. So the derivative for the particle maximum, the derivative has to be equal to zero. So this has to be equal to zero. So if this would be equal to zero, what do we see? We can move a few things here. But basically, notice that the 6,000 is present everywhere. I can bring the negative here, 1,500 plus zero, what you say, that may end up being negative. We're seeing that is actually not this. So this is our 
look at this city city thousand is present here and the key thing is that the city thousand is not adding anything it's actually multiplying so this term is multiplying i think this thing is also independent so i can start by saying let me keep the 60,000 here if you want to just keep it minus 15 zero, zero, t and this also goes to outside it becomes minus six zero 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 then e the minus 15 in this thing to go outside now note that this term is completely identical with this thing so the two terms can divide that and apart from that the negative here the negative here can also pass out so that now when we 1500 g as one is it and on the right side we we'll only have a one okay it's, it's a little bit crazy because when one goes to the other side this tends to be equals to zero so but let's let's continue unless if we made an error anywhere if not then this should be okay so one goes to the right side this becomes uh 15 this equals to one minus one which is at zero so this is actually at p is equal to zero so you, you might want to actually just go through the math and make sure that we didn't just up anyway but so far it looks okay on the display what this thing is it looks like our power will actually be maximum at t is equals to zero so if this is when our power will be maximum the next part is finding what that maximum power is. So again, go through the math to just make sure that we haven't made a mistake anywhere. Uh, but whatever the value of t that you find here, what do you do with it? You can come back with it and bring it to this expression for power that we derived, that we came up with when we multiplied the voltage and the current. And this is what we had. Yes, it was right here. So not the voltage times the power. We ended up with this expression. So in this expression, substitute your value fine, so that you get the corresponding value for that maximum. So this power is maximum at t is equal to zero. Bring that here. So at t is equal to zero, what do you see? If this term will be zero if t is zero. So that you can only this one here. So the one that will us here. So now we have 40. E and then this is minus 1500. And again, uh, T is zero. So this is multiplying zero, making the entire power there be zero. Not powerful power to looking for, but powerful what is on top there. So this comes 40 E to the power zero. Again, anything raised to the power zero is a one. So that here we find that our maximum power will actually be a 40. Now, what were the units? Remember, we did go through the unit um, discussion earlier, and we concluded that our solution will have a milliwatt. So because of that, the maximum power for this circuit, or for this circuit element, will actually be 40 milliwatt, and this occurs when T is equals to zero.